Okay. Um, whenever I do a featured reading, I usually do the work of somebody else um, to pay tribute. So this is a little poem by Brian Kim Steffens, originally from Rutherford, New Jersey. His mother's also a poet, and he teaches, um, I think it's called electronic poetry, whatever that is, at the University of San Diego, or electronic literature or something like that. It's called On Steroids. Funny how a hormone can make you feel better all of a sudden. I've told Joe Torrey to fuck off many times, but never meant it. <laughs> Brian Kim Steffens. <laughs> so rather than read from my latest book, which came out in October, I'll be reading from almost all of my books. Um, an early chapbook is Seriously Serial, Poets or Prada, with my friend Jill Greenberg's beautiful soap sliver collage on the cover. And uh, seriously, serial. I used to be a serials librarian. So these are poems in series. And this is called um, In the American West from the Compass Point Poems section of Seriously Serial. And it's uh, inspired by Richard Avedon's photograph of three sheep in a slaughterhouse in Ennis, Montana, published in his book, In the American West, from 1985. It's one of the few non-human subjects of that book. In the American West. In the American West, three sheep hang in a slaughterhouse, their heads hanging like purple wisteria. Thank you. For you fans of Greek mythology, we have this little poem. It's called Cora in Palm Beach. It's also short. Cora in Palm Beach. She never, and this comes from my book, Inside Out, Upside Down, and Round and Round, with me standing on my head on the cover as on the flyer. I'm not going to stand on my head tonight and recite, but I have done that. Cora in Palm Beach. She never really liked oranges, but once while eating one, <clears throat> she accidentally swallowed six seeds. She now spends half the year in Florida. <laughs> Poor in Palm Beach. Thank you. I think I've read this one here before, recited it before. Um, it's called Cigarettes, Coffee, and Beer, Oh Dear. And it's, um, you'll see, it's based on an American, uh, Jackson Pollock, the American painter. Cigarettes, Coffee, and Beer, Oh Dear. Cigarettes, Coffee, and Beer, Oh Dear, remain my diet. The drip, drip, drip of a rattled hand and magic wand, my staff of life. And so I drive, 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 and expedite through stains, with stains and ashes, through storm and strife, until I crash against the canvas of life on the floor, in a barn, at the farthest point east of an island and a state of death in life, totally, totemically crushed in the crash, crassly. <laughs> There, um, does anybody remember who Andrei Chikatilo was? He was a Soviet-era serial killer, a, a, a cannibal serial killer, who... Um, the Monster of Rostov. Mo monster of, of course, Big Mike would know that. The Monster of Rostov. <laughs> yes. I could always count on you for any historical reference. I appreciate that. Um, he, um, when he was in the courtroom, he was kept in a cage, and he claimed that he could never possibly have committed these murders because he was pregnant at the time, <laughs> which was like two decades. And he even claimed to be pre uh, lactating in the courtroom. So there's this tradition of Renaissance painting, 
of the Blessed Mother squirting milk out of her breast or, uh, or nursing the infant Jesus, called Maria Lactans, Lactating Mary, or Madonna de Latte, Madonna of the Milk. So, this is Chikatilo Lactan's portrait of a serial killer. This will not be confession full of repentance, no pentimento from behind these bars of my cage, no idiot ramblings of idiot with only words to play with. For I am a saint as my breasts are full of milk and my belly big with child. No crackler will crack confession out of me, no hidden meanings, no evidence to convict me in the red hour of mad beast. And I'll rim you too. <laughs> my, how you've grown in Winter Palace or riding in sleigh. Maria, Tatiana, Olga, no resurrection included, no resolution, no mindless exercises in power, industry, pageantry, pomp, no bogus god born flat, no Roman oft in cellar, but I do love blood. My, my, how pretty you are, and should I ask where you're going? Remain with me a while in these woods, my belly will be full soon, if only I could stifle the muffled rustling, muffled sobbing in mauve boudoir. Mother, mothering my motherhood in Mother Russia instead of raising son. So, let him rest in peace. Pieces of new Rome. <laughs> Thank you. And now I'm going to invite Joel Allegretti to come up and help me with this next poem. Again, from inside out, upside down, and round and round. This is called Rub-a-dub-dub, all -dub, dead in the tub. <coughs> Peleus, king of Thessaly. Yolkus. Agamemnon. Mycenae. Petronius Arbiter. Rome. Queen Amalasuenta. Poseidon. Jean-Paul Marat. Paris. Madame Restel. New York City. Paul Morphy. New Orleans. David W. Wallace. Independence. Jean Clemens. Reading. Sarah Teasdale. New York City. Maria Montez. Paris. Albert Decker. Los Angeles. Thomas Merton. Bangkok. Jim Morrison. Paris. Deanne Arbus. New York City. Billy Mercia. London. Peter Farndon. London. Uva Barshall. Geneva. Christina Onassis. Buenos Aires. Jerzy Kosinski, New York City, Orville Redenbacher, Coronado, Adrian Shelley, New York City, Dash Snow, New York City, Whitney Houston, Beverly Hills. While this book was in production, Whitney Houston had died. Now this was produced in, it was published in India. Everything was done by email. As soon as she had died, I knew that, but then I heard like one o'clock in the morning coming home from a very late night at work that um, she was found dead in the bathtub, which I didn't know. So I had to like, it was basically stop the presses. You know, we have to get, the, we have to get her in there, otherwise the book is out of date <laughs> before it's even published. Okay, so let's see. From my book, which came out last uh, April of last year, Exercises in High Treason, um, if anybody has actually driven in my car or have, has seen me drive, this will resonate. Um, I don't really obey traffic uh, regulations that well uh, on purpose. I'm very careful about it. So this is called I Go Through Amber. And Amber, of course, is the name of the yellow light back years ago. They called it Amber. I Go Through Amber. Not as an ancient wasp or bee, found, cataloged, studied, and curated by Paul Nashimbene at the American Museum of Natural History, perhaps Glyptopis Mirabilis. But in my car, in a rush, no time to pause on my way to the Museum of Natural History to see Paul Nash cataloging, studying, and curating ancient wasps and bees 
found stuck in amber by the Baltic Sea. Wow. I go to amber. So I began with uh, Brian Kim Steffen's poem. So here's a poem by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, but it's my interpretation of it. <laughs> and I call this breathless inspiration and aspiration, the punctuation of Elizabeth Barrett Browning's sonnets from the Portuguese, 43, How Do I Love Thee? Question mark. Period. Comma. Period. Comma. Period. Comma. Semicolon. Comma. Period. Comma. Period. Comma. Dash, dash, dash. Comma. 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 Exclamation point. Dash, dash, dash. Comma. Comma. Period. Elizabeth Barclay. She had, you know, tuberculosis, so you know, she had trouble getting the words out sometimes. <laughs> okay, now on to my next book that was published last, late last year. Picture this for your eyes and ears. Three minutes? Okay. So this is called Browning the Brown Sisters. And it's um, based on the photographs of Nicholas Nixon's wife and sisters-in-law that he took every year and they were exhibited at MoMA. You know, you see them age over the past 40 years. Browning the Brown Sisters. I fructify a fantasy each year, constructed from the frame of camera flash and ecstasy, the splash of black and white the same each year, the order left to right the same, the poses shifting some, the gazes lingering loose or tight, the constant contact soon to come as Heather, Mimi, Bibi, Lori, dissembling each when each assembles resembling none. So what's the story as each produces massive trembles within my being, being hot to brown these babies on a lawn? Let's take a year of photo shot, say 1981, all brawn in Cincinnati, I to follow. So red hair BB's freaky still. <clears throat> yeah, Lori is the first to swallow. And Mimi's hot and Heather chill. I fuck them all, each one together. Right on that sloping hill and lawn. Hold still. Never a smile, damn Heather. And still. But Mimi is my pawn. Smooth legs escaping tight short pants, all eager and all right. They toss their legs up. Lose loose blouses, dance around and ask me who's the boss. Each year is this year, so I finish in massive spurts of sun and tan, which never cease or else diminish. Oh God, oh Mrs. Callahan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>